All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory due to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. I want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Peace, citations, and many blessings to the elect Akim, the house of David, in the ancient Hebrew that's pronounced Bayat Dawada. And those are those men kicking this word in sincerity and in truth. I'm the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas camp. And it was in my spirit to go into this lesson. I, I was reading I was reading Deuteronomy 4 and 9, and I'll get it. But something that stood out to me was um, to keep thy soul. Matter of fact, um, I'm gonna start off. I'm gonna start off on that. All right, but just as a brief summary before I go into this lesson, as we see prophecy coming to pass, we see roars. I'm sorry, we see wars and rumors of wars. We see chariots. We see angels on the right hand side, and we're experiencing these demons revving up in the spirit too, trying to sift the brothers out. Within that being the case, since we're at the very, very end of this thing and we believe it, we see it, we have to examine ourselves, man, especially within this time. All right. With our experience being on the planet Earth, with us sojourning here, with us being pilgrims to this place, this is a, a grace period for us to get right. It's a grace period for us to cut the things off that were holding us back before. Now, granted, you know, um, Yahweh Shah is going to deliver the elect, um, you know, the grace and mercy is given to them. You know, we're not perfect, but we still have to strive for, for perfection. And if we see certain things that if we see certain things and feel certain things that we're going through that we feel like might be holding us back, we have to cut it off. We have to. All right. And let's say, for example, you still might be delivered for some of the things that you're doing, but we don't really know. We don't really know if we're those men. We have to cut off what we need to while we're down here within this period of time. OK, we don't know who, what, what, who are offending. You know, the angels are reporting every little thing, whatever your position is in the camp. And you report it to your head from something that you might see a brother doing or whatever the case is. The angels are doing the same exact thing to the Heavenly Father. Every little thing that we're doing is being reported. As is written in the book of Matthew, loosely paraphrasing, if you offend one of my little ones, you know, it should be better off a millstone be cast upon your neck. You know, and it talks about how his it talks about their angels that were going to report it to the Lord. And that's loosely paraphrasing. But everything that we're doing is being reported back. That's why it's very important for us to examine ourselves and to mortify our members while we're down here. All right. So with that being the case, I got a few scriptures I want to go into and Lord willing, they're edifying. But the first one I'm going to start off on is the book of Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. And I want to go to the ninth verse, because once you read Deuteronomy, this is Moses talking and he's giving us um, he's pretty much going through everything that we went through in the wilderness before we had crossed the, the Jordan River and entered into the promised land. He was saying all these things in Jordan. OK, and he was saying things we need to do in order to rule righteously within the kingdom. OK, well, within the, the, the land that was given to us for an inheritance. OK, and as we know that that land is right across the way because the deliverer, Yahweh, he's going to deliver his elect up. These are things that we have to go through. These are things that we have to practice being on this side for us to be considered pure in that day. OK, we have to cut off those things that are holding us back. So we'll be clean and without blame. As you read it in Zephaniah, Zechariah. It's Ze I believe it's in Zechariah, the first chapter, the 12th verse. It says that there's a light that's upon Jer a candle is upon Jerusalem. All right. And that light is upon you. And when a light is upon something, you start you see things that you might not have seen if it wasn't any light there. If you shine a flashlight to a dark spot, you see all the cracks and crevices and something that might have been there that it might not that you might not have known. And that candle is amongst every last one of us. The scope is on everybody. So with the scope being on us, we have to cut these things off that that might be hindering us. All right. There's something that's happening to us that we need to cut off. These demons know our vulnerable spots. These demons know our vices. These demons exploit our vices and they show up and it might go to a brother having to tell you about something about yourself or about the spirit happening to the point where you realize it about yourself and you got to cut it off. Whatever is the case. The Heavenly Father, the Spirit is dwelling within you to know these things. All right. And it was told for us to cut these things off, to be disciplined. OK, so without further ado, I'm going to read Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter in the ninth verse. And it reads, 
only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. So he says, take heed to thyself. All right. Now, he's not saying, you know, what it, what, it, what it means when it says take heed to thyself, pay attention to the things that you're doing. Pay attention to the things that you say. Are you offending a brother? Are you not in the spirit? Is a brother telling you something about yourself that you need to take heed to? And are you are you not taking heed to it or are you going to? Take heed to thyself. All right. And keep thy soul diligently. And that was the key point on there. Keep thy soul diligently. OK, got to make sure that you're in the right state of mind. Got to constantly examine ourselves daily. And talking to myself, too, we have to examine our keep our souls diligently. All right. In season and out of season, just like we prophesy in season and out of season, you got to make sure that you're on point to be able to make righteous judgments. We have to make sure that we're not doing the same things that we're judging somebody on. We got to make sure we're not committing the same Committing the same foul activity that we're judging somebody on. We have to keep ourselves. That's how you're going to be able to judge righteous judgment. Okay. We want to be judges, right? We want to be those kings and priests, right? We want to be part of the governing body, right? We got to make sure that we keep our soul on this side in order to do that. Okay. So I'm going to continue. It says, least thou forget the things which the eyes have seen. All right. And the beautiful thing is because. This is being this is Moses reiterating everything that they've experienced while they were in the wilderness and they have seen a lot of things. OK, and it's it shows you how fearful the heavenly father is, man, because he can take his spirit away from you at any time. If you don't keep your soul, if you're not constantly examining yourselves, you're going to forget a lot of things, man. The things that we've seen now, we might not have seen physical things back then. But as Yahweh said, blessed are those eyes who see the things that that you see for ancient men haven't even seen those. So we're seeing a lot of things now. And the Lord could take all that away from you to the point where you could just bug out. Look at a lot of these guys that bugged out and aren't in the truth no more. They seen a lot of things, chariots. They seen miracles, all of these things. And the Lord can just take that spirit away from you just like that. If you ain't being diligent, if you ain't constantly, if we aren't, if we are constantly in examining ourselves. All right. It says, and least they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life, but teach them thy son and thy son's sons. Okay. And that, I mean, you know, hey, we're this, the Wadi Haabah Shimmy Hawasha, we have the knowledge right now because this is something that was taught to us through our forefathers having the knowledge and wisdom and doing what was commanded for them to do. And our spiritual fathers, who the heavenly, heavenly Father sent down, the, the apostles, you know, they're doing what was commanded for them to do. And Lord willing, we stay on that path and we can do that to our children in the kingdom. You know, now I'm not saying that they're just our fathers, but on a spiritual note, man, they're father like figures. You know, the apostles and elders are father like figures. And their job is to teach us these things. OK. But, but going into this, it says, keep thy soul. All right. Examine yourself. Are you of the spirit? Especially since we're in a time so close to being delivered out of here. We see these things popping off, man. We supposed to be on fervent fire for this thing. And that goes into teaching, doing lessons, but also conducting yourself as a man of the Lord and constantly examine yourselves, constantly examining yourselves, making sure that you're doing the right thing according to the spirit. Making sure that you're walking in the spirit. It's very important. We don't want to be hypocrites. You know, I got another scripture I'm going to go into. And it's in the book of uh, it's so many scriptures that just go into this. And I got nothing but time. I don't got to clock into 545. So I want to pull up 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Verse 5. And it reads, examine yourselves. Whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Yahweh Mashiach is in you, except ye be reprobates? You know, and what does the, the word reprobate mean? It means to be um, to, to lack judgment, to be void of understanding. All right. To be to be void of judgment. That's what that word means. So just like what was read in Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter to, to prove to not to prove. I'm sorry, but to keep your soul. Least you forget all the things that you've seen. 
That goes into what we read in the scriptures too, what we witness, what we bear witness to. The Lord can make us reprobates at any time if we're not examining ourselves. If we're not willing to cut off that little nigga that's in our heads. All right. Whether what position we are in the camps. Hey, man, the higher the position, the higher the responsibility is, man. And if it's somebody telling you about yourself that they see, especially if you believe that their brother's in the spirit. You got to cut it off, man. Take heed to it. You know. A brother's a man of the Lord. Nine out of ten days until that tenth day comes and he tells you something about yourself and all of a sudden he ain't a man of the Lord no more and he tripping. Goes to examine yourselves. It takes a bigger man to examine himself and take rebuke than to just than to just buck up. That's infantile. That's childlike. That believes this whole time. You really didn't believe that person was a man of the Lord. You know? That's what it goes into. Being honest. Keep your soul. You know, we have the tools. We're in the last days. None of us want to be reprobates. Listen, take heed. Keep thy soul. You know, I got another scripture I want to go into, and it's in the book of Colossians, the third chapter. This is Colossians chapter three. And this is in verse five. And it reads, mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. All right. So when you go into the word mortify, it means really to cut off. Okay. And I'm going to pull that word up in a blue letter really quick. Bear with me, Baba Kasha. So that word mortify is necro. And that means to kill pretty much. Let me go to it just to make sure. I don't want to speak. Yeah, Satan's really, Satan's really on it right now. Let me see here. It was not even, let me pull it up. You know, but when you go into the word, ne necro means dead. There you go. It says to make dead, to put to death, to slay. All right. Of an impotent old man to deprive of power, destroy the strength of. So it says to make dead or to slay. So to kill, kill your members. Okay. And when it says that those things. Those things that might be holding you back got to be cut off. That's why Yahweh said, if your right arm, if your right arm, if your right arm offends you, cut it off. Loosely paraphrasing, mortify your members. We're here in the period of time where we have access to do that. We are in the grace period to be able to do this. All right. These things that are holding us back can't inherit the kingdom of heaven. All right. That's why he named those. That's why he had named those um those attributes afterward fornication. America, what's it full of? Fornication, uncleanliness, what's it full of? Inordinate affection. All these things are heavily pushed. That vibration is placed out here within this place of captivity. So it's around us. So this is a trial period for us to show that we truly love the Heavenly Father, which is following his commandments, listening to what was stated, listening to what was written and applying it to yourself, applying it to ourselves. You know, especially since we're so much closer. In order to be great, in, in order to be considered great, in order to be heroic, you have to persevere through the things that might have been holding you back. And those things have to be cut off. That's why it was written in Deuteronomy 4, 9 to keep thy soul. You know, I got one more scripture. I'm going to end off on and this in the book of uh, Psalms, the second chapter. And I, I really I really want to pull it up in the, in, in the Hebrew too. um. Because I have the book of Psalms in Hebrew and, um, you know, I, I've been um, reading every chapter in Hebrew and when you read it in Hebrew. It's so much more power within those words once you actually read it in the Lashawan Kodash or the Holy Tongue. OK, but um, this is because uh, remember, this lesson is going to examining yourself and mortifying your members and keeping your soul. OK, so this is Psalms chapter two, verse 12. It says, kiss the sun. At least he be angry and ye perish away from the way when his wrath is kindled. But a little blessed or happy are all they that put their trust in him. OK, so it says kiss the sun. Right now, of course, we know that that's going into, you know, being obedient or being disciplined to what was commanded for us to do. What did Yahweh tell us to do? All right. He's the comforter. He had gave us all the instruction that we need. We have to be obedient to that.
to that power. Kiss the son, at least he be angry. Because if you don't kiss the son, he's going to be angry. And what's that going to lead to? It's going to lead to death. Okay? It's going to lead to wrath. It's going to lead to you getting killed off on this side. Because you weren't willing to mortify your members. Kissing the son and mortifying your members goes hand in hand. Because Yahweh Shai was crucified for all of the stuff that we do. So if we can't keep ourselves disciplined and examine ourselves when he had done all this stuff for you, you're taking his crucifixion for granted. You know? And I want to read that actually in the Hebrew because um, when you go into it, and I'm going to pull it up here in my, in my book of Psalms as well in the Hebrew. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to post it. I'm going to take a picture of it and post it so brothers can see. But that word kiss is nashak. And that word son is bar. Okay. So when you go into that word nashak, I'm just, I'm just wait. It says to put together, to kiss, to touch gently. All right. To handle, be equipped. Okay. So to be equipped, right? Be equipped with what? When you read it in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the holy armor. That's in Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And also when you go into touch gently or to kiss, it means to yearn. Like when you yearn for a woman. And I'm not, it's just an example because you're supposed to yearn for wisdom as the scriptures say. And wisdom is likened unto a woman. And when you yearn for it, you're going to be tried. Okay, but that means to do what was commanded for you to do. It says to touch gently. Now I'm going to read that, I'm going to read that verse in the Hebrew. Okay, in Psalms, the second chapter. And it reads, um, well, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to start at verse let me see here. I'm going to start at verse 11. Okay. And it reads. It says. Um, Chawa. Sarwa. Shapa. Shapa maya. And that's be disciplined. O judges. Okay. That word disciplined is pronounced. Hawa Sarwa and Judges is Shapatya, okay, of the earth. Arataza, all right, and that's us. Be disciplined, O judges of the earth, because we're the true judges of the earth, okay? And it says, um, Serve Yahweh. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, this is verse 11. Serve Yahweh, and that's Ibadawa, Atha Yahweh, with all. Okay, and that and it reads and rejoice with trembling. It says in all, and that's bayara, bayara, so that ye may rejoice wagayalahwa. When there is trembling, all right, baraida. Now this is the key point in verse twelve where it says kiss the sun. When you read it, it says nashakwa, nashakwa. Okay. And that's to yearn for or to kiss. OK. And then it says purity. And that word there is bara or bar. And that's purity. So to kiss the sun, you have to yearn for purity. And when you read it in Psalms, the 24th chapter. And I'm going to end it off on this. It says Psalms 24 and 4. He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. Who have not lifted up his soul into vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from Yahweh and the righteousness from the Most High of his salvation. So you have to mortify your members in order to have clean hands. Okay? You have to yearn for purity. Kiss the sun. Because all of these ways are being disciplined. Because what it read before was to be disciplined in the Hebrew. Are we not considered as disciples? Do we not call ourselves disciples? That means to be disciplined. Ain't nobody that's going to be disciplined is going to be running around doing whatever the hell they want to do and not examining themselves. In order to examine yourselves, you have to be disciplined enough in order to examine yourself and, and, and also to know when you're wrong. When a brother's telling you about something, to take heed and listen to it. It's very important. Kiss the sun. Because with the brother telling you something about yourself, that's the spirit of the Lord communicating with that brother. And with, with you bucking up and rebelling against that, you're not yearning for purity. You'd rather be dwelling in the same bullshit you was in, listening to your own mind, when your heart is deceitful amongst all things. You're right, but all the brothers that who you thought was in spirit was are now now they're wrong when they tell you about yourself. You know now the spirit's wrong. When the spirit was supposed to be within you, now the spirit's wrong all of a sudden. 
Only clean hands can inherit the kingdom of heaven. Because once you read Psalms 24th chapter, it goes into how you're going to be able to ascend into the holy hill, ascend into righteousness. All right. Into that governing body. And it gives you the list of instructions. We have the instructions. We just have to apply it, especially since we're so much toward the end. But I'm going to end it off on that. Lord, when it was edifying, I'm going to give all praise, honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to our apostles and our elders of great millstone that rule well. Peace, citations, and many blessings to the elect Akiam, kicking this word in sincerity and in truth. Shalom.